what if the battery in your electric vehicle could be used to power, well, anything? And I'm not just talking about USB charging here, I'm talking about proper power. Enough to power the appliances in your home, maybe even the appliances in your neighbour's home. Well, the idea is called V2X, or Vehicle to Anything, charging. And it's actually more than an idea, it's on some cars right now. And this is sort of closer than people realize. The ability to technically do this is there. This technology isn't just changing what our cars can power. It actually has the potential to completely redefine the relationship between cars and the energy grid itself. Let me explain. Okay, before we go any further, I want to clear up why you might have heard V2X called a few different names. Because the X part of it changes depending on what that EV is capable of charging. And brace yourself, because it's about to get pretty acronymy. Okay, so first off there's V2L, which stands for Vehicle to Load, and that's where you use your EV's battery to power things that could normally be plugged in, so charging a laptop or running some power tools. Next up is V2V, that's where you use your EV to charge another EV, pretty simple. And the last one is V2H, or Vehicle to House or Vehicle to Home, and that's where you use the battery in your EV to power your house. It could kind of be your backup generator that's parked in your garage. That's WSJ's Jennifer Hiller, who has been writing about EV charging technologies. If you lose power during a storm or some kind of emergency, and you need backup power for a few hours or a couple of days, your car battery could be the source. That's exactly what Ford is deploying on its electric F-150 Lightning. The company says the battery in the Lightning can fully power a home for three days, or run essentials for up to 10 days. Now, obviously, if you use all the energy in your battery for powering your home, you're not gonna be able to drive anywhere. So the company has developed an app that allows users to keep some power set aside for the truck itself. Ford recently announced it was working with energy provider PG&E to test how their system interacts with the grid. And PG&E have announced a similar initiative with GM for the company's Ultimum platform. And the Lightning isn't the only commercial vehicle to have this technology. Both Hyundai's Ioniq 5 and Kia's EV6 also offer V2L charging. According to the company, the EV6 has up to 62 kilowatt hours of power, which, the company says, is enough power for a family of four for five days. But there's one acronym I haven't touched on yet, and it's one that could actually save you money. And that's V2G, or Vehicle to Grid. Vehicle to Grid is the idea that takes it a step further, where you could provide power from your vehicle that would feed power onto the electric grid at large, and you would be a little mini kind of store of energy coming from your garage. The idea is that the grid would use the battery in your EV to store energy at times of low demand, and it would then buy that energy back from you at times of peak demand. How much energy they'd be allowed to take would be defined by you, the user, and how much you get paid for that energy is still very much up in the air. One of the main ideas of this is if you were getting compensated, it would essentially offset some of the cost of buying an electric vehicle. Some commercial vehicle manufacturers are already running pilot tests on V2G charging, like Porsche, who recently hooked five electric Taycans to the power grid in Germany to test how well the two systems communicated. But Jennifer told me it's unlikely we'll first see widespread V2G adoption in personal vehicles. The first places that we're seeing the vehicle to grid programs are in the, sort of the more commercial space, you know, school buses or fleets. But there's a reason why this technology isn't widely used yet, and that's because it's too early to tell what the effect of all that charging and discharging will be on the lifespan of the battery. There's a lot of debate, I think, about how this affects battery life. What's more, many EV owners may want to hold on to every watt of power in their batteries. After all, according to Edmonds, range anxiety was one of the top concerns buyers had when considering switching to an EV. Here's the thing though, the IEA forecast that the demand for lithium iron, one of the key ingredients in batteries, is set to increase 40 times by 2040 as the demand for energy storage increases. And with such a high demand for batteries, there's a strong chance that many of them will stop becoming single purpose. So while our cars may not be pumping energy back into the grid just yet, it may not be long before your EV is powering your neighbor's appliances. Hey, I didn't have time to cover it in this video, but if you want to see Vehicle to Grid in action, head over to Utrecht in the Netherlands. They're trying to become a bi-directional energy city. And if you want to know more about the future of how we might be getting from A to B, then don't forget to subscribe. See you soon.